This is an upscale workflow possible by the latest update to Comfy UI 0.3.52. And in today's video, we're going to dive into those updates, particularly using subgraphs. So if we zoom in here and you do a before and after, you see the upscale process was completed. And for the sake of this demo, by the way, I'm using the illustrious model because my potato PC can't run while I record a video. But anyway, this is possible with the latest update using subgraphs. And what subgraph is, if I open this up, you'll see the nodes that I'm using for this upscale process. And then we can go back to the previous window by clicking up here and it brings us back. Now I'm going to open up this subgraph and you see my generation process. And essentially what subgraphs are is a new way to group your nodes. So previously what we do is select a bunch of nodes, right click, and then it says convert to group node. But you'll see here now it says depreciated. Eventually this is going to be replaced by subgraph. And although that worked fine and dandy for most things, it wasn't perfect. Sometimes it wouldn't work with certain nodes or you would lose connections or whatever the case may be. So everything in this workflow, you see I have listed on one node here, everything from the model to the CFG and steps to my prompt. So how does this work? As I always say, make sure you're on the latest version of Comfy UI. And to keep it simple, we're going to start with our basic generation workflow. So we have our checkpoint, lower load. Actually, I'm going to delete that. We don't need it for this demo, but you can always include it. We have our clip text encoder, flux guidance, which actually we don't need as well because we're using illustrious. We'll leave it. There's a clip text encoder for the negative prompt that I've hidden because we're not using it. Our latent image node, VAE decode sampler, save image node. Pretty basic stuff. So all we need to do is select all the nodes except for the save image node. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can right click, select convert to subgraph with the blue icon here. Or we can go up here to the menu. And if you hover over this, you see it says convert selection to subgraph. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you see we have one combined node. Let's open it up a bit and let's give it a name. Just got to double click and I'll just call it generation. You could call it whatever you want. You'll see that it's empty. From what I hear, they're going to work on automatic widgets right now. You need to do it manually. So we're going to click the top right here and it's going to reveal our workflow. Okay. You'll see these sort of like bracket looking things. So that basically shows you the output is on the other side of the fence. And then on the very left, this is where we would connect. Okay. So all you need to do is grab this end. And then now you'll notice there is an area here to input. If we zoom in closer there, you see that pops up. And one piece of advice I can give you right away is to make sure that the order you want to see it in the nodes is how you're going to connect it. Right now, there isn't a way to organize the order. And if you're particular like I am, I like to have certain things in order. So I like to load my checkpoint first. Now, if we were using flex guidance, I'd connect that next. So I'll just put it anyway, but we're not using it. And then I want to connect to CFG, then we'll do steps, do sampler name next, scheduler, denoise, for seed, I think I'll just leave it for now, and then we'll do width and height as well as the batch size. Now you see we have all these input points connected, and you can actually move this around. So you just need to grab within this little area here and just bring it up to wherever you want. It's up to you how you want to organize it. And now if we go back to the top left, you'll see that there's two tabs. Now this is context basic because I was working on something else. But anyway, now we see the node filled in with all the options, but we didn't do the clip texting code. So we can go back in there and connect the clip texting code. We'll go back just got to pull this down a bit and there you go. So now I could just run this and uh, 
Yeah, it's nice and neat and tidy. I know some of you guys don't mind the noodles. I like simple and easy. So this is a great way to organize your nodes and workflow, especially if you have all these complex workflows on the same workspace. And there's a generated image, nice and simple and easy. So going back to my upscale workflow, I separated the two just to keep it from being all on one node. And I actually wanted to keep the upscale process separate so that I can come in here and adjust the settings any which way I want. And theoretically, I can add certain things here. Let's say I wanted to add the upscale model and maybe I wanted to bring in tile width and height. I can do that as well. And then we go back there, you see now, I've added those details on this node as well. So I'm really impressed by this update. This is one of the bigger updates since I think June was the last time they did some updates. Some other things they mentioned was the minimap. If you go down to the bottom corner, you can now toggle on the minimap and you can use it to navigate around if you want. And then if you click on this option here, it gives you some other options that you can play around with. There's also a new manager if you go into the menu you'll find the templates, the settings, and now you'll see manage extensions. We click on that. We can go to whatever installed ones I have. Let's say I click on the detail daemon here and it gives you some information and a preview of certain things here. Let's say we select KJ nodes. It's got a link to the repository. There's actually a section for the nodes to see a preview as well. So that's super handy. And also if you bring in a workflow, the same thing happens. You'll get a notice that you have some nodes missing. You click on open manager. It'll open up the extensions manager and all you got to do is click install and you're good to go. A few more minor updates is that if you go up to the tabs here, you now see that you have a nice little preview just by hovering over the tabs. So you can see which workflow you're working on and it just gives you a visual idea. If you go into the settings, under light graph, you can switch the canvas navigation mode to standard. Drag navigation is what you're used to. Standard is more universal where if you scroll up and down, the workspace scrolls up and down. If you hold shift and scroll, it goes left and right. This is very common with like photo editors. I believe Figma is like this too. I could be wrong. And then if you want to zoom in and out, you just have to hold on to control and use your scroll wheel. So if you're used to navigating that way, you can switch that on. I actually like the old way, so I'm going to set it back. Also, you'll notice down here, there is a shortcut panel. You'll see the controls here under essential. And if you click on view controls, you'll see there's a few more options here. And you can also manage your shortcuts. So if you wanted to customize anything, you can do so in this screen. Furthermore, if we close that off and click here, you'll see toggle bottom panel. And this is so that you can see your iteration speed and any errors or whatever the case, instead of having your command window, maybe on, on another monitor or behind your browser, you can now toggle between the two. And there's also now a help center for documents, Discord, GitHub. You can see the latest releases. Oh, 3.52 is out. Looks like I need to update myself. So if we click on that, it tells us what's the latest updates. So now with this, it's got me thinking about an all-in-one workflow that I was working on a few months back. Probably try to pick it up now that it could probably be just a little bit more simpler. As always, folks, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're already using subgraphs, I'd love to hear what you're using them for in your workflows. Until that next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.